الله أكبر كبيرا الله أكبر كبيرا الله أكبر كثيرا أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعيد مبارك With the will of Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala I would like to shed a light upon how we should feel on the day of Eid and very often we are happy because we know that we are going to eat some meat and that we're going to meet and greet but in reality today is about something entirely different if you remember yesterday then the majority of the people were begging Allah Jalla wa Ala for forgiveness and they say that the day of Eid is in reality representative of how you should feel after being forgiven. Like yesterday, everybody was begging, Ya Allah, forgive me. Everybody was asking Allah Jalla wa Ala Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to forgive them once again. All these people that gathered begging Allah Jalla wa Ala Tabaraka wa Ta'ala for their forgiveness. In reality, Allah never sets as many people free from hell as He does on the day of Arafah. On the day of Arafah, Allah Jalla wa Ala boasts with His creation because actually they came to terms with themselves with the fact that without Allah Jalla wa Ala, they cannot enter into the gardens of paradise. One of the scholars said, if you see that you are begging for forgiveness, then know that it is not because you wanted to beg for forgiveness. If you see that you are begging for forgiveness, then know that it is Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose to forgive you. It is after He wanting to forgive you that you raised your hands to the sky to beg to be forgiven. So on the day of Arafah, when we get together, we have that feeling that we feel light. We feel happy. We feel bright. Because yesterday was a very tiring day. Yesterday was all about, Ya Rabbi, forgive me for what I've looked at. Ya Rabbi, forgive, forgive me for what I have listened to. Ya Rabbi, forgive me for my thoughts and my emotions and my feelings. Forgive me for the hearts that I have broken. Forgive me for the words that I have spoken. Ya Rabbi, let me begging for forgiveness be a token that I choose for you and not for myself. Our scholar said that whenever you disobey Allah, it is the essence of arrogance. It is the essence of self-love. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah azza wa jal said that whenever you disobey Allah, it is because you love the sin more than your Lord. And repentance is returning to Allah, acknowledging that Allah is more worth to you than your sin. And this is why on this day, we think of two things. This is how we should feel and celebrate whenever we repent to Allah Jalla wa'ala. After repentance, you feel good. After repentance, you feel in a good mood. After repentance, you feel that you have returned to Allah after having forsaken Him. You feel that you go back to the reason why you were created. And then secondly, you know that whenever you perform an act that takes you away from entering into the depths of hell that you should rejoice. So whenever you see that you are performing good deeds, then there is one thing you should feel. One, that you are chosen. Two, that you are further away from hell than you ever were. So the day of Arafah is a very beautiful one. The day of Arafah was a very beautiful one, but this is the result of it. And the last thing I want to say is, Arafah, a lot of people go all year long sinning, all year long breaking hearts, making people cry. All year long they forget to repent. And then on the day of Arafah, all of a sudden they say, well, let me delay my repentance for the day of Arafah. And then all of a sudden everybody raises their hands to the sky. Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi rahimahullah. He is very clear about these matters that Arafah should be the climax of the Ta'ibin. Arafah should be the climax of those who seek to be forgiven. They've been directing themselves with their hearts all year long. Longing for that one day where they will be set free from hell. So it is not about that day. It is about living up to that day. It is not about Laylatul Qadr. It is about, it is about looking for Laylatul Qadr all year long. All year long your Qiyam is a preparation for Laylatul Qadr. And all year long your repentance is a preparation for Arafah. So that Arafah like Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah wa ta'ala made clear. He said that one of the opinions and according to him it's a strong one. Is that Arafah is called Arafah. Because when Adam and Eve were sent to Mother Earth, they had to look for each other for many years, for many decades. And then when they met each other, it was 
at Arafah. And that's why Arafah, it means he knew her and she knew him. So when we go to Arafah, we come back to celebrate that they two found each other and finding each other meant that now they were allowed to continue their lives after having repented to Allah So now to, to cut a very long story short, the day of Eid is one of the most beautiful days. The day of Eid, it is called Eid يعود, because it comes back, back every year. But now Habibi, one day Arafah will not come back for you. Arafah will not know you. لم تعرفك Arafah. Yani she will not know you. Eid will come again even after we die. People will sing their praises of glory. But on the other hand, people at that time will maybe not even mention your name. So if you know that next to Arafah, and this may sound like a cliche, but it isn't. One day, there will be no Eid for you. So you should turn the meeting with Allah into your Eid. That's why the Salihun used to say, اجعل بقاءنا في هذه الدنيا صوما واللقاء معكم ربي عيدا. Oh Allah, turn my staying, my residence in this world, turn it into fasting and turn my meeting with you into Eid. Your true Eid is the day when you meet the Lord Almighty Jalla wa'ala and when the Malaika greet you, when everybody who thought that you were a loser will see that you were the strongest of all worshippers. It is when you get out of that grave and that you are enlightened by the light of your deeds. It is when you return to Allah and you enter into the gardens of Eden. No, rather in Firdaus, that's your Eid. That is when the Malaika will come to you. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Salamun alaykum, they will say, because of your patience. And they will say, Ni'ma uqabat dar, this is the best of all destinations. Wal malaikatu yadkhuluna alayhim min kulli baab. Salam. And the malaika, they will come out of each door of Jannah. I mean, how many doors are there in Jannah? Billions. Out of each door, the angels were raised because they want to meet you because they are amazed, baffled, marveled by the power you had to survive this dunya. This dunya is like a terrible jungle, poison everywhere. But you made it. You kept on walking when others would have given up. You kept on smiling when everything in told you in any you told you to cry. You were courageous by not giving up. And every time you fell, and every time you were tackled by the devil, by the master of defeat, or by the master of deceit, you were the master of defeating the shaitan. So this is not a light thing. It is, don't take it lightly that you are still praying. Don't take it lightly that you still look forward to meeting Allah. I know perfection is only for Allah and as a human being for the Prophet Muhammad But apart from that, you are strong. The Prophet made that very clear. He said, من أحيا سنتي عند فساد أمتي فله أجر شهيد. Some people have declared it ضعيف, but it is strong enough to use as a proof. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, and the one who revives my sunnah in a time where my ummah spreads corruption will have the reward of a shaheed. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم spoke about these people with the most amazing kind of faith, and he said the people with the most amazing kind of faith are people that will come after you he told the sahaba radiallahu anhum he said there would there will be people who have never seen me who have never heard me but they read about me in a book and they believed in it and followed it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked forward to meeting us like i've mentioned before and he said how much do i look forward to meeting my brothers i mean when you hear this it, when I speak, I say this all the time, forget about me. I'm Suleiman. When I speak, shut your ears. I don't care. But when the hadith of Rasulullah comes to you, that's the moment where we stop thinking about other things. When the words of your Prophet come to you, alayhi salatu wasalam, that is where you say, when he, alayhi salatu wasalam, spoke these words, they were meant to find my ears in 2024. So when a hadith comes to you, that is where we really pay attention. So what did Rasuli, what did Rasulukum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say about you and inshallah me? He said, how much do I look forward to meeting my brothers? They said, Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers then? <laughs> he said, you are my companions, but my brothers are people that come after you. 
They, will, they had never seen me, but they would leave their properties and their family just to be with me. He was looking forward to meeting you. He was, he was looking forward to meeting you even before you were created. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. So this is why when we see Eid, and we know that Eid may not, Ya'ud, Eid may not return for us, then we have to tell ourselves one thing. If I do not live until the next Arafah, where Allah frees people from hell, if I do not live until the next Arafah where sins are forgiven, then what will I do after Eid where I will start sinning again? And there will be no Arafah for me. How will I get rid of my sins? How will I get my body into Jannah so that I will be saved from hell and that my skin will be spilled from the burning flames of hell? Every time their skins are burnt, we will give them new skins so that they can taste the adab, the torment. So this is a very important question. Arafah one day will not come to save you. So how are you going to save yourself? And this is why the only way forward is after this Eid that we, inshallah, turn every day into Arafah. Not meaning the real Arafah, because there is no sin where there's nothing like Arafah. But we turn every day into a day of repentance. We are going to stop just yani, indulging in things that we know that will take us to hell. A sin is not just a sin. Oh, I feel bad because I have sinned. Who cares about how you feel? You will care about what you've done. You will care about what you've done after the sin. Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah azawajal, made it very clear in Minhajul Abidin ila Jannati Rabbil Alameen, where he said, if you see that you humiliated yourself by giving in to the devil, then now honor yourself by going against him. If you see that you have given in to the lies and the deceit of the master of deceit, then you have to get up again. Because either you die in a state of sin, or either you die in, die in a state of repentance. And the last thing I want to say is what Hibatullah al-Barizi, Rahimahullah Azza wa Jalla al-Qadi al-Shafi'i said. He said, and know my brothers, listen carefully, know my brothers, that every second that you do not repent for a sin, while you have the ability to repent, is a sin. Delaying repentance is a sin because it is a sign of arrogance. It is a sign that shows that you actually couldn't care less walking under the wrath of Allah Jalla wa ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why people literally have to dive into the ocean of repentance so that they can swim, so that they can get out again, cleansed by Allah Jalla wa ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala and purified by Him. I'm not the best person to say this. Because the Prophet said, Kullu bani Adam Every child of Adam makes a mistake. The only one who had the right to speak and stand in this place and who would repre be, represent what he was, was the Prophet Muhammad Everybody who comes after him and speaks, we all fall short. But the Prophet if he would stand here والسلام, and he would speak, we would say the words he says are beautiful, but what we see from him is even better. The Prophet ﷺ exceeded his beautiful words. He went beyond beauty. He, went be he was beyond fascination. He was everything that you can imagine and more of what it means to be a perfect human being. So apart from him, we are all submitted to the Sharia. To qawlillahi wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Fi dawi fahmi salaf al-ummah. In the light of the ulama of the ummah. So this is why we ask Allah Jalla wa ala to make us of those who follow the Prophet Muhammad alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa inwardly and outwardly. Allahumma adina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina wa srif anna sharra ma qadayt, fa innaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk. Fa innahu lan yaiza man aadayt, wa lan yadhil man walayt, tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. Allahumma la tajal al-dunya akbar hammina, wa la mablaq ilmina, wa la ila al-nari masirana, wa jaal al-jannata hiya darana wa qararana wa mustaqarana. 
اللهم اجعل بقائنا في هذه الدنيا صوما ولقاء معكم ربي عيدا واجعل خير يومنا يوم نلقاك فيه اللهم رد الفلسطينيين إلى أرضهم يا رب العالمين اللهم انتصر لهم انتصارك لأوليائك وأنبيائك أو لأنبيائك وأوليائك اللهم ردهم إلى ديارهم وإلى شرفهم وإلى عزتهم ولا تأخذنا بما فعل سفهاء منا اللهم إنا نتبرأ إليك مما فعل سفهاء منا اللهم أرنا في الظالمين يوما أسودا اللهم أرنا في الظالمين يوما أسودا اللهم أرنا في الظالمين يوما أسودا وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين